Okay. Do you want to take the first racket? Um, what we're going to do next? You can come on up. We're going to go up and reorganize those. Well, you don't have to reorganize them, only if you, if you see something that's obviously blatantly out of order. Okay. But what we're going to do now is decide where in this list from really, really has to happen to kind of cool. Should we say, hey, at this point, if we don't get at least this much done, the project's not even worth doing. Let's so we define it into the must-haves and like-to-haves. Yeah. Gotcha. Exactly. Okay. That's what we call the core feature set. Yep. The, you know, kind of create the minimum final product. So what's the least we can do to make this like, all right, that's, that's still worth doing. I mean, but, you know, you had to get into the product. Okay, so... Let's bring let's bring back together here. Uh, John's looking at where John's looking at where he wants his line. Um, one thing I want you guys to notice, you may have already noticed, is we have definitely have kind of two different camps up here, right? Half the room thinks you know this is it. Half the room thinks it's right here. Now here's where the road meets the road, though, right? I mean, you guys all you spent a lot of time up here at the board. I appreciate the care you took, but the fact is that your product sponsor is going to come through at this point and say. Ah, you guys are all wrong. It's right here. I need this feature right here. You know, uh, at that point, I would encourage the room to, to debate a little bit. You know, some project sponsors are going to be, you know, pretty strong personalities, and they're going to say it's my way or the highway. And some will be more flexible, and you just kind of got to sort that out as you as you um, facilitate this this event. What do you think, John? I'm putting him on the spot a little bit. All right. Uh, I guess I would probably go ahead and go more like yay. Wow. So does anybody, so what he just put, <laughs> what he put below the line here was uh, attendee creates their own profile. Does anybody disagree with that? Um, in addition to attendee, be notified when events coming, um, know how many attendees there are, this is the host. Host sees a list of upcoming events, speakers, be approved, the speaker the event. So does anybody have a problem with that? The speaker, you know, the host isn't in there. There's nothing about the host, I don't think, actually, up above that line. There's nothing about the sponsor above that line. There's nothing about the sponsor above that line. There's nothing about the speakers, I don't think, above this line. There's a sign. But there's one here, yep. Uh, assigned speakers to events. So there's nothing. So yeah, <laughs> um, I don't think that 
maybe lines up with the objective of uh, communication, that's and good. it's. I, I just don't. I don't think that. John, did you look at the objective before you put your line? I would say, like knowing what the next event is, is like that's the communication to the prospective members. I guess in my mind, sort of a difference between like proactive communication versus like. As it is, it's like a, it's more passive, I guess, communication. But I think, to a certain extent, it still accomplishes, I guess, the the base level, at least for like the V one kind of perspective. Did it, who else looked at the objective as they were uh, deciding where to put their line? This team did. I looked at it. Did you? Yeah. Okay. So I mean, it, it's really common for the teams to come through here and just forget about the objective at this point and start doing. That. So it's important at this point then, when you get this line set, that you guys compare where you're at to the objective. Because either your line, you know, for us, either the line's in the wrong place or our objective really isn't that accurate. So and a lot of times, again, it's going to come back to the sponsor. And I'm being a little wishy-washy because I don't want to influence the room too, too unduly. But, you know, the project sponsor may go, no, 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 you know, I need sponsors, events, communication. I need this line to be right here. And guess what? That's probably where it's going to wind up. <laughs> so, you know, you got to kind of play with it uh, a little bit. But, you know, in, we did this a week ago at the Department of Roads, and we had the same problem. And somebody pointed out, hey, you know, objective doesn't match what we got, and sponsors changed the objective. So that was kind of, it was good. So that's where we're at. I'm going to leave this up here, and I think, um, I'm going to go with John's uh, core feature set line since he, you know, we kind of put him in charge. Uh, we won't use mine, and so when we do the documentation, we'll use we we'll use this one here probably. Not that it's that critical right now, guys. But I mean, in fact, we'll probably document all these. <coughs> but all right, what else? Is it overview about what comes next? Yeah. So yeah. Do you okay. have any questions or comments? What do you do with those product donors that say, sorry, i got to have it all. I'm not going to go in. Take them in. <laughs> I mean, it happens more often than you want it to, obviously. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm thinking of one that we had in town that was like that and it was kind of like talking to a brick wall, you know? It's like, and I don't know what we did. We definitely did finish the assessment, but we never did the project. But, yeah. You have to, you kind of just have to say, look, the reason we're doing this is we're not saying we're not going to get this all done someday, but we have to get to some point, and by the time you see this, you're going to realize you have new priorities. And so if you're telling us that we have to do all of this, you're saying you're going to introduce a lot of risk to this project, and we're telling you it might fail. So if you want to take that risk, you should know up front that that's probably a recipe for failure. I will say this too, a lot, really the, the project manager has a couple of tools at their disposal to control scope creep. They've got budget, they've got schedule, and they've got um, you know management. Really, I mean, those are the those are the three things you're going to be able to. I mean, you can control sc scope. You can try, but if you got a, a scope that's running out of control, you got to have a budget or schedule in place that with with conditions. Uh, well, I'm sorry, with constraints or assumptions in here. And we didn't really talk about assumptions or constraints. I, I kind of moved over it. A lot, and they didn't come up, obviously. Come but, up, yeah. but a lot of times, you know, a, a constraint might be an example. And, and, you know, we did kind of have one, but I didn't talk about it. A constraint might be, look, I need this by July 1. Um, project must be done by July 1. Okay? So we get a constraint up there, and you could say, well, look, you know, we, we kind of know, we can kind of give you a ballpark estimate um, right now. There's no way we're going to get all this stuff done in that time frame. And they could at that point say, well, I don't want to do the project. Maybe that's okay. I mean, that's probably great, actually. I mean, that's, that's a great outcome. We did do, you know, a couple of customers who they came in thinking they were going to spend $10,000, and after we were done with our assessment, they were in the forty dollars to $50,000 range, and they went, oh. We can't afford that. We said, well, I'm glad we found that out now instead of the end of the project. It was really well, well worth it. It was money well spent. We had a guy who um, he spent you know, a thousand bucks on one of our assessments. It was a lot of money for him. He was a small business. He had this grandiose plan for, for a website that he wanted to implement. 
and it sounded great. I mean, he was really focused on a couple of the whiz bang features of this website and this process that he was going to do. And you know, in the end, he decided not to do it because of our estimate. It was it was like eighty grand or something. It was huge, and he it was huge for him. And he he walked away, and he was angry at us for taking a thousand dollars. But what did we save? We saved him a ton of money because. Uh, if he had embarked on this process, he'd be ten thousand dollars into it and still have not a fraction of what he wanted to get on the project. So you know, it just kind of is what it is. Schedule and budget at the Department of Roads. I will say this. Uh, ooh, boy, I don't know if I want to say this. Um, budget is is not a driving factor in a lot of our projects. So we artificially insert schedule uh, due dates, drop dead dates. We force the users to say, hey, this project is, is going to be done on this day. And you're going to be accountable to the director's office if it's not. So we make the customers accountable for um, success of the project as much as us. Before we did that, we had a really, really hard, we were getting blamed for projects running late all the time. The IT group was getting blamed for projects running late all the time. And it wasn't always us. It was, it was scope creep. And without some sort of limit, schedule budget, you're really in, in trouble about managing scope rate. Again, another long-winded answer. Sorry, guys. That's great. That's good. Yeah, I would also say, um, going back, like, what do you do with, you know, product sponsors, product owners who are like, no, no, all or nothing. Well, again, on the, you know, where we started with this, it was the custom applications for companies coming into us, not internal companies. And to be honest, that was, a, that was a nice little red flag. Maybe we shouldn't work with this person. That would be pretty hard to achieve what yeah. they want, and we would either make absolutely no money, or they would call their lawyers because we didn't satisfy with it. Um, and again, like they said, you know, as, as we go down the line, more and more things pop up. Then you get to the point where if you don't define a somewhat good line, um, you get to the never-ending project because again, those things are sprouting here and there. The scope is just going to grow, 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 and. Uh, it's good, especially internally, to be able to define that, that area so that you can say, hey, look, you know, we'll go to here, and then we'll know how much growth we need at that point to, to spin around the next phase. Um, that's definitely how we've been doing it, mm -hmm. and it's, it's good. Um, working iterative, iteratively, I grew up on the East Coast on the ocean, and one of the best you know, imageries that I've heard, you know, descriptors for using Agile and using iterations, and doing something like this is, um, you know, the sailboats, you go in a straight line, straight line is what you want to achieve. The shortest distance between start and finish is a straight line, right? But when you're sailing, the wind's going to push you off course a little bit, so you have to tack back and forth. So you get to the end of that little line and you go back. So with a project, you get to the end of your line and then you decide, are we in a good spot or do we need to course correct? You course correct and you go to the next line. Um, that's uh, you know, the best thing to do for me. And I think being able to describe that to you to whomever is setting those lines. It doesn't necessarily matter if it's product owner, product sponsor, or the developers who are up there defining their own lines. Being able to express that, I think, is, is very helpful to see, you know, all right, we don't necessarily need to get all the way to this point. Okay. Any other questions before we move on? <coughs> so that line represents not an iteration, but the whole project by July 20th. First release, yeah, that's that's typically what we're, we're we're trying to get to. It doesn't always work out that way. We suggest it sometimes, um, but you know, this is the target too. You know, like with any Angel project, this is the target with any project anywhere. Um, you know, if if something comes up that has to come in to scope, you know, then it comes up, and we either have to pull one out or we have to adjust the the end of the project um, budget schedule. So yeah, but it's the target, right? First release. <coughs> 